And, you know, the uh, as a pastor, you know, that I'm supposed to be a bridge builder. You know, Jesus didn't burn up bridges. Jesus tried to build bridges because he always tried to make the connection between himself and the people. You know, he never only and and, and 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 he never preached about, you know, walking away from people. He said, "The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the, to the poor, to set to set at liberty them who are bound." So he came, you know, and as he walked, he was building that bridge to the other people in order for them to be able to meet one another. But now, as a pastor. I'm supposed to be doing the same thing. Right. I'm supposed to be doing the same thing. Now, yes, I'm going to preach against uh, false doctrine, false preachers, false teachers. Jesus did that as well. Mm -hmm. You know, Matthew 23, when, when we think about the Pharisees and stuff. You know, so yeah, I'm going to continue to do that. You know, I'm not going to compromise a word in order to try to please somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, and then I'm never, ever going to do that. Uh, and so the thing is, is that, you know, in the in the in the pastoral position every pastor i don't care what church you are what denomination you are if your example isn't jesus you miss the boat mm -hmm. see right. because the thing about it is if we allow ourselves or make ourselves the pastor the leader or whatever you want to uh define yourself as being you know when we do that guess what's involved we'll get involved our emotion, our self-righteousness, our pride, our arrogance, all of that is going to get involved. That's why the Bible tells us that if we're a new creature in Christ, it's no longer we who live. It is Christ Jesus who lives in us. Right. And I'm going to tell you something. Right. Jesus is not going to compromise his father's word. Yeah. Nope. Jesus is not going to do anything outside of what God tells him to do or what God shows him to do. Right. I'm no different. Right. See? Because I've got the word of God and I've got the Holy Spirit of God to, to, to show me and to teach me exactly what I need to do. And it will all line up with what Jesus did and how he did it. Mm -hmm. See, I can't let my personal feelings get involved in nothing. See, because the thing about being saved is you are to be an alien in a foreign land. Right. That's right. You ain't to be, yeah. you're not to be like everybody else. Yeah. Right. You're not to handle issues like everybody else. <laughs> You handle your issues as the Lord by the Holy Spirit leads you. We don't have a lot of pastors doing that. Right. We have pastors, as my wife said earlier, that are building their own kingdom. Mm -hmm. right. And it only matters to them, you know, what is right and what is wrong, even though what they deem is right and wrong, you know, is literally wrong. Mm -hmm. right. Because the motivation of the heart is not right. Right. See, it's not right. And the thing is, is that, you know, we, what, what these guys, a lot of these guys have done, they have taken the position of the pastor and made themselves God and say, I get to choose what I want to do. I get to choose what I want to say. I get to choose what's going to happen in this church. And I get to choose what ain't going to happen in this church. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, I also get to choose who's going to stay in this church. Mm -hmm. right. Because trust me, I'm going to tell you something about the church today. The church today does not want to have anything to do with the true Jesus Christ yes. of the Bible. Right. Right. They don't want to have nothing to do with him. See, mm -hmm. right. they want to create, which they most of them have. They want to create their own God, their own kingdom and their own doggone uh, uh, um, statutes and doctrines and stuff. Mm -hmm. They want to be in charge of all of that. Yeah. They don't want anything to do. Why do you think when Jesus stepped on the earth and started exposing the religious, the Pharisees, the scribes, and all of those people. Why do you think they all got ticked off at him? He was exposing their sin. Right. These guys had become so comfortable in their self-righteousness mm -hmm. and so comfortable in people cowering and bowing down to them and right. stuff. But here comes a guy, he ain't bound to nobody but God. Right. That's the only person that, he goes, that he's going to bow down yeah. to. See? Yeah. So they all got ticked off at him and stuff. See, And the minute that he started, they started seeing that the people were really receiving and accepting and believing what he said. What did they choose to do? We're going to kill him. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. They said, we're going to kill him. We're going to take him out. Yep. See? 
Because if we don't take him out, then the people ain't going to be sucking up to us no more. Yes. It's about a good way to put it. Amen. See? And that's what they, and that's what these preachers want to do right now. Mm -hmm. They want a whole bunch of people that suck up to them. Yep. A whole bunch of people that are going to worship them. Right. See? Right. You know, in the first chapter of uh, 1 Corinthians, you know, Paul said, you know, Paul said, y'all all says that, say, I'm a Paul. Yeah. I'm of Apollos. Yeah. I'm of Cephas. See? Mm hmm and Paul said, did, did, did we die for any of y'all? That's right. That's true. See? Today's church has separated itself literally from the truth. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They have left Jesus in the dust. Yep. In their mind. They've left him in the dust. Because when you look at the behavior of the pastors, you look at the behavior of the people, and none of it lines up with the word of God. Right. Absolutely none of it lines up with the word of God. See, we don't we don't go around out here seeking publicity and seeking notoriety and seeking, you know, uh, 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 stuff, you know, to make ourselves look good and to make somebody else look bad. Right. Right. We don't do that kind of stuff. Right. See, and I know of a situation right now where we got that going on. See, mm -hmm. you got a pastor stirring up trouble. You got a pastor doggone got all these people. You know, making himself to appear to be right, you know, which in my view, from what I've read and what I've seen, he, he ain't right. right. I even sent something to him. I said, man, I said, look, I said, you know, this stuff ought to be nipped in the bud, basically. You need to go to your brother. Y'all need to work this stuff out, see? Because right now, all they're doing is stirring up, all he's doing, really, is stirring up strife. It's what he's doing, stirring up strife, dividing the church. Look, we're supposed to be, as I said, as pastors and even believers, if there's any way possible, the Bible says this itself. You know, if at all, if at all possible, yeah. be at peace with, with all men. Right. Be at peace with everybody, even your enemies. Right. Because Jesus tells us what about our enemies? Love your enemies. Right. He didn't say try to make them look bad. He didn't say try to dog on make everybody out here that's a friend of yours in, in their eyes. Make him look bad. See? Mm -hmm. Talk about him like a dog. See? And that's what this guy's doing. Mm -hmm. See? Talking about the guy like a dog. Talking, you know, and, and the thing is, is that other people have tried to get him to dog on fix it. Mm -hmm. And ask him, <coughs> man, you, you know, y'all need to, you know, because this is really just tearing up the body of Christ. But you all would be surprised at the number of people that don't even know the guy that he has a difference with, but yet they hate him. Yeah. Because their friend says to hate him. Right. See? Right. So they hate him because he says to hate him. And the thing is, is that they don't think that he don't think that he's going to uh, have to pay for that. It don't matter. You can make all these people agree with you. But I can tell you one person that ain't going to agree that's with your idiocy. That's right. And that's Jesus Christ. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. God is all about righteousness. God is all about holiness. Mm -hmm. And he would not have right. said, if at all possible, be at peace with all men. I'm going to tell you something. It is possible for any of us to be at peace with anybody that we don't like. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why? Greater is he that is in us than right. he that's in the world. Wow. When we allow Jesus to be in charge, it's not about us. Right. It's right. about him. That's right. Right. And Amen. Jesus does not want us having breaches in the body as if we don't have enough already. Right. See? True. <clears throat> because there's too much self-righteousness in church. There are too many preachers who think that they're above God and stuff. See? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you something. When you're a pastor and you're going around spreading all kind of lies and deception, you know, and all you're trying to do is stroke your ego. All you're trying to do is make yourself look good throughout the world. This stuff is going all over the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's all because he's promoting it to do that. See, I saw the other day and I, and I was on his Facebook page because I posted over there. See, trying to get him to look, man, you know, this stuff shouldn't be like this. Mm. You know, the Bible says if you, if you get ready to bring your gift to the altar, he said, but if you yeah. realize that your brother got something against you, mm -hmm. he said, you put your, your gift at the altar and then you go and get it right with That's your right. brother. That's, right. That's what Jesus said. Right. Right. See, 
And so what makes us think that we're to be any different? Right. Right. You see, this is the thing about these pastors, some of them. They think because they're a pastor, they got special powers, special privilege. No. See? Amen. And if anybody can give me one verse that says a pastor is above everybody else, I want to hear it. Mm -hmm. I want to hear it. See? The Bible says that Jesus made himself of no reputation. Right. Right. No reputation. It wasn't important to him that people recognized him or right. whatever. The only time it was probably important they recognized him because he was the only somebody that had the power to heal. Right. The power to deliver, the power to save, the power to set free, see? But he didn't go out there promoting himself. See? Right. Amen. Trying to make himself look good and make everybody else look bad, right. see? Why do you think I'm a pastor? Because I'm the one who should be looking to help those who are in need, whether it's spiritual or physical. Right. Right. And it's like I tell y'all in this church, and I've told my wife, we've talked about it several times as well. When there is a breach, when there is a disagreement between people, especially who claim to be Christian, who came to be saved, God don't care whose fault it is. Right. That's right. God said, y'all need to get this fixed. Right. And I'm telling you, this guy has probably caused more division in the body of Christ than anybody that I know since I've been saved. Mm -hmm. Because he's promoting it. Anybody know anything about, uh, 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 anybody know Bubba and what that guy name? Rick and Bubba, mm -hmm. see? He's trying to get this stuff on Rick and Bubba yeah, show. show. He's telling people to, you know, call your radio stations and tell them about this, this, this little wow. thing that this guy did to, to my son. And I, he's doing that. And I swear, I mean, you're talking about, I used to have gut wrenches when I was a, an athlete. This is more gut wrenching than that. Because you know who's in charge? The devil is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The devil is in charge. See? And you can say that you're a child of God and you saved all day long, you know, but when you're out here doing things that are not of God, you are not of your father in heaven. You are doing the deeds of your father, the devil. That's right. See, mm -hmm. we're going to look at this in a minute. See, mm -hmm. we've looked at eight, the eighth chapter of John for so many different things, you yeah. know, to, to compare it to and stuff. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, because you say you're a pastor called by God, that don't mean nothing. Right. right. That doesn't mean anything. Right. See, Judas Iscariot walked around like everybody else and wanted a disciple, That's but right. he wasn't. Yep. Right. Right. See, he wasn't a disciple. Jesus just didn't kick him to the curb, hoping that he yep. at one point he would get saved. Yeah. He would hear a message and change his heart. See, right. but that never happened. Right. See, and I'm going to tell you when you're out here trying to shame somebody, and I don't care who's right or who's wrong. Like I said, you don't shame people. If anything, what you really want to do is a perfect opportunity to turn the other cheek and allow this person to see the true love of God. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Corinthians, the Bible says, uh, says what about love? It doesn't suffer a wrong that's been done to it. Right. Don't worry about that. Love not only covers that, but love will forgive whatever the wrong is that was done. Right. See? But the thing about it is you, God can't go and ask forgiveness in your place. True. You're going to be the one that has to go and ask that's forgiveness. True. You're going to be the one that has to swallow your pride, swallow your arrogance, swallow your self-righteousness, and stop looking like a fool. Right. I'm telling you, anybody that is really born again, they see this crap for exactly what it is. Yep. If a person is looking at this whole situation through the eyes of God, then they can see that this is not of God. Right. You know, I saw one little girl. She, uh, I can't remember where she was from. She was, uh, she was Asian. And, uh, and her name was Johu, Johu, I think. And, um, and she said, Mr. So-and-so, -and -so, she said, you know, she said, Mr. Pastor so and so and so he, you know, he may still be hurting and he may still be, you know, not really understanding and maybe thinking that maybe if his daughter didn't go uh, uh, where she was going, that she might still be alive today and he's still hurting. She said, why don't you all, why don't you 
call him and talk to him and just, you know, ask your son to forgive him. He said, I don't think that, that he done anything bad is how she put it. She said, but we are, she said, we are Christians. Mm -hmm. She said, we need to fix this. She said, we need to get it right. Mm -hmm. And I'm paraphrasing what she was saying. She said, but we need to get it right. Now, all those negative comments about this guy, you know, that people made, oh man, you had 20, 30 comments on those. But when this young lady posted that, not one comment. Right. Not I'm one surprised. person saying, you're right. Wow. We are brothers and sisters wow. in Christ. Wow. We do need to get this together. Not one comment. Mm. Not one. And even the stuff that I sent to God trying to get him to get it right with the other brother or whatever, and I heard nothing back from him. Of course. Not one thing, mm. see. Some people are so stuck up on themselves mm. and so stuck up on who they think they are, mm. you know, that they don't care who they treat like crap. Right. All they want is what they want, and they don't care who they've got to step over to get it. See? Wow. That's true. That's and by me making sure true. that I'm getting everybody to focus on and take my side or whatever, then everybody's going to look at me as being right. See, mm. The thing about it is we don't look for vindication from men. Right. Amen. We look to be pleasing to God by doing what's right, whatever the situation may be. Right. 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 It doesn't really matter. See, we don't have a lot of people that live like Jesus today. Amen. And the majority of the pastors that are in positions of authority, God had nothing to do with it. Amen. Absolutely nothing. When Jesus said you will know them by their fruit, he said you will know them by their fruit. Right. See, how they're living, you're going to know that. See, and the thing about it is, is that, these guys, the majority of them, I'd say 99.9% .9 of them, they don't even pass the qualifications in 1 Timothy 3. Go ahead. See, they don't. Turn over there and let's look at it. 1 Timothy 3. I mean, I'm sick of these lying preachers and these self-righteous, arrogant, narcissistic knuckleheads. <laughs> sick of them. Look, you know what? It bothers me if I think that I may have said something wrong to somebody that may have caused them any kind of grief. Mm -hmm. If I think I did. And if I think I did, I can't wait to make sure that they understood and that they didn't think that I was saying something, you know, in a certain way. See, mm -hmm. you know, to try to offend them and all. And when you can be gleeful about destroying people's lives, you can't tell me that person ain't of the devil. Come on, right. Come on. What did Jesus say? I came to give you what? Life right. and life more right. abundantly. That's right. Yep. He said, I didn't come to destroy you. I came to save you. Mm -hmm. I came to be your witness and to be your example to follow so that you would do the same things that I have done. See, right. if the Bible says <coughs> that as he is, then so are we in the earth. Why aren't there a whole lot of people living like him? Right. Come on. Right. Where are they? Yep. Right. Where are the preachers mm -hmm. that know the sheep and the sheep know them? Right. Mm -hmm. Where are the preachers that protect the people or protect the sheep and that's a watchman and warn them when a wolf is Thank showing Jesus. up? That's right. Thank you. <clears throat> you know the problem with that? Come on. Most of the wolves are in the pulpit. There right. you go. That's where most of them are. That's why you don't hear warnings. Right. right. From the pulpit about right. these guys. Right. They are the ones in the pulpit. Yes. True. Yes. Hirelings. Killing people. Yep. Stealing from people. Yep. Destroying the lives of people by telling them they can do things that God commanded that they not do and warned them that if they did do them, destruction was just across the street. Amen. See, you don't love people if you lie to them. Amen. True. You don't Preach. love them. Yeah, see? True. Good preaching. Can you imagine me? Good doggone preach. saying I love my wife. Come on. You know, and keep lying to her every day. Sneaking out the back door saying I'm working back, back there in the shop, but I done tipped out and went somewhere else. Mm. See? Mm. And constantly lying. The Bible says that people who do that, they are of the devil. Yes. Their father yes. is the devil. Right. See? We're going to look at that after we, after we get out of Timothy. So you can fix your sights on, eight, on, on John chapter 8 and verse 44. I wrote some things down. 
that, I, that God told me to explain. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, this is what the Bible says. This is a true saying, if a man desires the office of a bishop, pastor, teacher, whoever, he desires a good work. A bishop then must, must, mm -hmm. must wow. be Amen. blameless. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't leave an option when he was speaking through Paul. He didn't leave an option that you could or could not be. He said, you must be blameless. Wow. See? And if you can't keep or get a doggone grip on your nasty tongue, you're not blameless. Amen. You're not blameless. You're right. guilty. Yes. yes. You're guilty right. of disobedience. Right. That that dog gonna knock you out from being a pastor right there. Come on. Because I'm gonna tell you something about the Lord. If God tells us something, He expects us to believe it and to do it exactly the way He said. Yes. See? Nothing's gonna be taken away by God from His word, nor is there anything gonna be added to it. It, it means exactly what it says, and it speaks exactly to what it says. See, when God tells us to be holy, do you know we better be striving to be holy? Right. Yes. And yes. if he's telling us to be holy, he's telling these clowns in the pulpit to be holy as well, yes. because they claim to be born again as well. Come on, come on. See, they claim to be born again. The husband of one wife, vigilant, sober of good behavior, given to hospitality, Apt to teach. I hate to hear what this time would te be teaching. Mm, what I'm talking about. Not given to wine, no striker, not greedy or filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covenant, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his own children in subjection with all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? That's right. See? Yeah. Right there. That disqualifies most of them. Yep. Amen. Because they ain't trying to do anything to keep, you know, and, and what he's literally saying here, Paul is literally saying, your kids have got to be right and in love with God and living that kind of a life. Right. right. See, right. How can you tell somebody else, hey, you need to be living like Jesus, Carrie? You need to be walking in the, in, in the likeness of the Lord. Your life should be lining up with Jesus. You ought to be doing this. But then when you look at them knucklehead kids, the doggone hair is about six different colors. Come on. Right. They, got, they got jeans every which way. They got muscle shirts on with tattoos all on their tongue. Come on, come on. See? Come on. Everywhere. See? Anywhere they can get a tattoo, they got one. Preach. And it seems like it's a fad with some of these fools yeah. around here. Yeah. To say, oh, well, you know, I got to get me a little tattoo back here and all of that. Yeah. See, when you start talking like that, all you're doing is just telling me I want to be like the world. Preach. Right. I want to be like the world. I don't want to be holy Preach. and righteous before Preach. God. Preach. Why in the world would you want to scar up the temple of the Holy Ghost? Come on, come on, come Why would you want to do that? See? Tell it. It's tell one thing it. to do it before you got saved, but after you get saved, everybody out there talking about how popular it is now, so you want to get your tattoo. Mm. Preach. See? They need to put a tattoo, a whole, a big set of lips across your doggone eyeballs. See? <laughs> so you can't see your stupid in the mirror. See? Don't be coming around here telling God, I want to be holy. I want to live for you. You're a liar yeah. if you're not doing it. That's right. See? Yeah. That's true. That's good. And if you stir up strife, you're a liar as well. Right. Yeah. right. See? Can't, I don't like that stuff, man. It's hard enough trying to get people to believe the truth as right. it is. Yes. Right. And then you got some guy with yes. the name recognition running around here lying, stirring up stuff, strife and stuff, and got his chest stuck out all the way to China. Come on. Because <laughs> everybody's siding with him. Come on, come on. Except for Roy Lee. Oh, God. I think he's a fool. And the other Jack. And I think he's a clown. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way he can say he has a love of God in him because he's making no effort to manifest that love to a hurting father or somebody that he's got a difference with. Right. And stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've had people that I didn't like before I got saved for various reasons. I had people I didn't like after I got saved. But I thank God for two people. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for my wife. Mm -hmm.
Because she said, you can't be late. You can't do that. She said, that ain't right. She said, you, you need to. She's telling me I need to repent. <laughs> and I feel like I'm the one that got wrong. See? But it didn't matter what I did. Because if the Bible says that greater is he that is in me right. than he that's right. in the world, that you are to love your enemy, right. that you are to pray for those who despitefully use you and say all man of evil against you, love and hate not. Right. That's Amen. what the Bible says. Right. Amen. This guy's a fool. See, the fool says in his heart there is no God. Mm -hmm. right. And by saying there is no God, that means I don't have to do what God says in his word. Right. Yeah. I get to pick and yeah. choose what I want to do. When I, if I feel like I've been hurt, I'm getting even. Yeah. I'm getting vengeance, see. You know, he ain't getting away with that because he's messing with me and my son, see. God ain't taking nobody's side on that, mm -hmm. see. And the thing really this other guy appears to be a whole lot better guy than you because ain't nobody hearing him trying to shame nobody. Right. Trying right. to slam nobody. You don't hear nothing about him doing that. See? You know, the Bible says to be slow to speak and quick to hear what the Spirit of God That's is right. saying. Mm -hmm. I've been praying that for Mary a long time. Oh. <laughs> wrong for that. But honestly, <laughs> but honestly, we pray about that. Honestly, we pray about that almost every night. God, help us to be slow to speak and quick to hear. Because yeah. my message was going to be on that wagger you got in your mouth. Mm -hmm. See? You wag it every kind of which way when somebody make you mad. Mm. And if you're a female, you wagging your tongue and you wagging your hand and you got your one on the hip and you got one point. <laughs> Child, let me tell you right now. See? You're going to let everybody know, you know, how you feel. And I'm going to tell you something. Sometimes it's not important how you feel. Right. See? Amen. When the Bible said being slow to speak, God is literally saying there are times when you need to just shut up. Right. Right. Yeah. You need to keep your yeah. mouth shut. Because if you keep your mouth shut, there's a good chance that this stuff will blow over yeah. and then you'll have an opportunity to calmly solve the problem. Right. See? Right. But when you got when you got your doggone butt in a tizzy and all of that, and you got your self-righteousness going on, and you got your ED egomaniac uh, 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 system going on and stuff, you don't want to hear what nobody got to say. And see, the sad thing about this dude is that he don't want to hear nothing that God has to say. Nothing. That God has to say. It's amazing to me how people want to identify with the Lord, but they don't want to obey Him. That's true. Yeah. true. Yeah, a lot of I, I don't get true. that. Yeah. Yep. A lot of how can you even say that you are a child of God yep. when you are willfully choosing to disobey Him? True. See? Yeah. And you know what's hap what happens when you don't want to hear anything that God has to say? You know, in James, the Bible says that mm -hmm. when lust is conceived, it bringeth forth sin. Right. And sin with his complete what? Bring it forth? Death. death. That's right. See? You may not drop off and fall over and die, but you are dead spiritually. Right. 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 Yeah, right. You are dead to anything that God has out there that would heal your soul because you don't want to be healed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You want the notoriety. You want the attention and stuff. Right. And you want everybody to know that you hate this guy. Mm -hmm. right. You don't have a right as a child of God to hate anybody. Right. Right. Because if God tells you to love your enemies, ain't nobody else left to hate. Right. Right. Those are the people that we don't like, we hate, or our enemies. See? We can put up with everybody else, but our enemies, uh-uh. But when you forgive your enemies, Sincerely and Christ-like forgiveness, you ain't hate nobody. Right. Yeah. The thing a true child of God looks for is the avenue to make peace. That's right. Mm. When you make peace, there's an opportunity to build a relationship in Jesus. Amen. Right. Because when you build a relationship in Jesus, He ain't taking nobody's side. We're all trying to get together and do the same thing in the name of the Lord. Right. See, we don't want to just do what's right for me. We want to do what's right for you and mm. making sure that that righteousness comes from God. Right. See, that's what you want. See, you don't hate nobody. See, and the thing is, is that the more you hate, 
the more you will continue to hate. That's right. right. Yeah. If you don't cut it off at some point and say, look, I'm tired of being controlled by my flesh and by the devil. So, Lord, I'm coming to you and I'm asking you to forgive me this morning. Forgive me of what I've done. Forgive me of the hate and the feelings of, 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 of unrighteousness and disobedience and rebellion that I've allowed in my life, in my heart. See, Because yep. mm -hmm. that's where that stuff settles. It settles in your heart. Yeah. Because in your heart, that's where all your emotions and all that stuff is at. Yeah. See? But before it got to your heart, you know where it started at first? No, he didn't. Right up yeah. here. Yep. See? Yep. And the devil had you going around the track in your self-righteousness, in your mm -hmm. pride, and in your arrogance. You kept walking around the track and he kept feeding your dog on ego. Yep. He kept feeding your pride. You're right. They are wrong. You are right. See? <laughs> You're right. See? Look, the devil's going to be real confident telling you lies, you know, and trying to make you accept them as the truth. Right. And you know what happens when in your mind you allow him to have a liquor party? <laughs> you know, he's up in your head drunker than a clown. See? That's why your self-righteousness, when it comes out, it sounds so stupid. Right. See? It don't make any sense. Self-righteousness don't make no sense. Right. Pride doesn't make any right. sense. Right. If the Bible tells you pride go up before the fall, why in the world would you not guard your heart against it? Amen. Amen. Huh? Amen. Why wouldn't you do that? That's right. Because if you don't, it will destroy you. That's yeah. right. Before the fall. Right. It's when pride comes. Right. right. See? Before the fall. And the pride aids in the fall because the pride tells you that everybody else is wrong and you're the only one in America that's right. <laughs> that's, right. that's what it does. That's right. See? Yep. So if you want to go to hell, hold on to your pride. That's right. Yeah, yep. that's true. Because God says if you don't deal with it, there's a fall coming. Amen. Yeah, right. See? Sure there's right. a fall coming. And the thing about it is you don't know when it's going to happen. Right. Because God didn't give you a timetable. Right. Because right. if God said, well, you know, if you got pride in five days, you know, if you ain't got rid of that pride, you're going to hell. Mm. Some of them servants will wait until, you know, the, the, uh, uh, the, fifth, day. the, the, the fifth day <laughs> on the last second mm -hmm. and then try to repent. Yeah. Do you know what? That ain't repentance. Amen. Right. If you know something is wrong and it's not right, do you know when's re when repentance is the best time? Right. Immediately. Yeah. That's right. That's immediately. Right. Because if you don't deal with it immediately, the devil's going to get a foothold. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He's going to get a foothold and God has already warned you, give no place to the devil. Right. Right. Amen. Why would a person jeopardize eternity with God for a stupid pleasure here on earth that God has already warned you and told you that if you continue in that vein, you will spend eternity in hell. Yes, right. People do it every day. Yep. They do it every day. And you know why? Because they don't, number one, they don't have a fear of God. Right. See, they don't have a fear of God. If you fear God, there ain't no way you be. If you fear God, you would be on that floor. That's right. And you would be crying out to God. That's right. See, yeah. people just do not realize the importance of repentance. Yeah. Right. yeah. And I'm and I'm not kidding. The last couple of days, I'm, I'm asking God, especially about these pastors and stuff. You know, and this one in particular, I said, why won't they repent? Mm -hmm. Why, why, do, why don't they want to repent? See? You know, it's amazing how we look at repentance after we get saved than we do before we get saved. Right. right. When we look at repentance before we got saved, we realize what, why we need to do it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But when we get in, so to speak, then we look at repentance different. Mm. Because we think repentance really is only important in my first salvation. Come on. When I first get saved, that's when repentance is important. Is important. Repentance is not that important now, you know, because shoot, I did that little sin, but I I, I can repent of that later. See? Mm. There's no heartfelt conviction right. when you convict when you commit a sin in the moment. Right. Right. See? Right. And when you think when you got that kind of an attitude, do you think you are pleasing to God? Mm -hmm. 
No, you're just waiting for the next accident because as long as you have that, that stupid mentality, you know, that repentance is when I say it is and yeah. what I say it is, then you're going to slowly slip into yeah. darkness. Yeah. See? And the Bible warns you about being deceived. Yep. But yet nobody wants to be, pay any attention to what God said. They think that God really don't know what he's talking about. That's true. Come on. And that they don't have to repent. Right. But they really think that stuff. Now turn over to John chapter 8. <clears throat> In John chapter 8, I want you to go, go over to uh, verse 12. And in this, in this particular, y'all know the chapter. I mean, gosh, everybody should know about heart by now. I'm going to start putting, putting y'all on the spot on Sunday because somebody's going to have to recite it <laughs> on camera. Mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, you can do it, Samuel. <laughs> <laughs> but in chapter, in, uh, in chapter 8 and verse 12, it says, It says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, Okay, and these are the guys as you know that are saying that they are of God, that Abraham is uh is the, uh that God is their father, and they are of the seed of Abraham, is what they're saying. All right. So he says, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Why you see so many Christians, they got a doggone big old knot on this side of the head. They got one on this side of the head. They got a bloody nose and all of that because they ain't been walking in the light. Right. Mm -hmm. They're walking in darkness. Mm -hmm. Every time you see them, something wrong with them. Mm -hmm. They got a problem. And see, and this is the same problem, and I want us to keep this in mind in regard to pastors. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, I'm the light. Right. He says, if you follow me, you will not walk in darkness. Right. Right. You will not. You shall not walk in darkness. Right. Because see, as long as you're walking in Jesus and you're walking in his truth and stuff, you're going to be able to see a lot of things that you wouldn't normally see if you're not walking with him. Right. And literally, you know, being the light is just having him walk with you. Right. Talking with you, reminding you by the Holy Spirit. Of everything that he said. Mm -hmm. right. He turned that heat off his heart. Yeah, I'm about to throw up. Don't do that. Mm -mm. He says, I'm the light. I'm the light. And if you're following me, he says, you won't walk in darkness. Mm -hmm. You know, and a perfect example of that would be when the disciples were following Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. When they followed him, yeah, they made stupid mistakes, but it wasn't because they didn't see it. They knew what was right at times, Peter mainly, but they still get it wrong. Mm -hmm. But the thing was, they knew because of the light that they could overcome whatever it was. Right. Because Jesus being that light, see? And if you don't take Jesus with you everywhere you go when you get up in the morning, and when you go to bed at night, you're not going to know how to handle issues when you face it. Right. That's right. Walking in the light will give you that direction. See, because right. why? You can see. Mm -hmm. You can see. You can see the light. And you got the Holy Spirit saying, walk this way. Right. Walk that way. No, no, no. Don't do that. Don't say that and stuff. See, this is the problem with most people who don't walk in the spirit of God. Or don't walk in truth, rather. And don't obey the word of God. See? When they got their get out and get ready to go out. They got their own plan in place. That's right. Mm. And on the way out the door, they go around back, 
They locked the Holy Spirit up in the outhouse and said, I'll come get, get you when I get back. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. I, don't want that, I don't want you with me today. See, because I got mm -hmm. some things I want to do. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and if I go do them, then you're going to see me. So I'm going to leave you here. Now, I'm going to tell you, that's a stupid person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because he still sees you. Yeah. Yeah. Still know everything that you're doing. Right. But that just tells mm -hmm. you about the blindness about what really the attitude of people who walk in darkness mm -hmm. and who are blind to the truth. Mm -hmm. They say they know the truth. That don't mean nothing. Right. You know, the devil says he believes in Jesus. Yeah. Does that mean he's saved? No. Yeah. Come on. Huh? Does no. that mean he's saved? No. So you got a lot of his kids running around here in their self-righteousness saying, well, I don't care what you say. I know I'm saved. Mm. See? Yeah. Yeah. I know some probably had somebody tell us that. Oh, yeah. I know yeah. I'm saved. Yeah. See? Yes. And they say it with confidence. Yeah. And you know what that tells you? That tells you that the, that the devil's got that dog on dog collar around his neck and mm -hmm. got that dog on chain in his hand. Mm -hmm. And he is telling this sucker everywhere you can go. No, you don't want to go to that Jackson boys house. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. No, no, no. Go over here to this church over here. You like it a whole lot better. Yeah. See? <laughs> You don't think the devil tell you to go to a yeah. church where yeah. Jesus ain't there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. In a heartbeat. Yeah. See, people today, they're more, they're in churches, they're more concerned and focused on size, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. attendance, mm -hmm. entertainment, mm -hmm. yeah. and gimmicks. Right, right. It's what they major on. Right. You know, I mean, some of these churches that they're building, I mean, they're about... 20 times big as this house. Mm -hmm. See? Yep. I mean, just build it. For, and I'm, you know, we were driving by this one church that built, and I'm thinking, well, why do they need all that space? <laughs> I mean, the church is huge. And then they got another big old area right in the front of the church mm -hmm. and stuff. And I don't know what that is either. But see, the thing is, is that we are not in the church, rather, people are not concerned about souls yeah. they are concerned about making you yeah. feel good yeah. and making you feel comfortable right. See, Amen. in those churches yeah. you are not going to hear anything negative right. that's going to make you feel bad right, right. nothing right. you ain't going to hear none of that yeah. they're going to do they will dog go on dog grovel at your feet trying to make you comfortable you know in what's supposed to be god's house right See? Amen. See, when in God's house, God don't care about none of that stuff. He doesn't care nothing about buildings. Right. Jesus, most of Jesus' ministry was outside. Absolutely. Yes, it was. Same thing with the apostles. The apostles, you know, when, 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 when after the day of Pentecost, they did start building, uh, 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 starting up churches in the home. Yes. Yes. In the home. They weren't trying to build no doggone, uh, what they call them thing? Uh, yeah. What was it, the Roman thing where they had the lions and all of that? Coliseum. 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 Yeah. Ain't nobody interested in that. <laughs> when you're concerned about the souls of men, women, and children, the size of a building never comes into That's right. play. That's right. Never. Right. Because you're thinking more about what can we do in order to minister life to these people, right. to train them, to disciple them. Right. We need to be concerned and focused on that. Yeah, that's right. Jesus came to save souls. Yes. He didn't come so you could use his name to sell your book. Right. Right. To make money. Right. That's right. Most of these preachers are known more for making money than saving souls. Right. right. Amen. Than preaching the gospel, than preaching the truth. Right. They're no more for that than anything else. Right. Cars, homes, mm -hmm. right. jets, mm -hmm. all of this kind of crap, you know? Yep. <clears throat> and they think by doing that, they are telling people, once you get rich, you know, once you get like, a, oh, Jesus is coming back. Mm. I think a stupid Creflo Dollar said that. Yeah, he did. When y'all get, get the money, y'all going to, you know, Jesus is going to come back. Ain't no chapter and verse for that. No. Nope. See the thing that I that I that I, 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 I uh, that I blame people for. Really, two things. Number one, being ignorant to the truth. Right. And number two, being stupid <laughs> for not recognizing this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, that's stupid. Look, I got a Bible. 
And in this Bible, God tells me what I need to do to be saved. He tells me what I need to know in order to be righteous and to be holy before Him. Right. He shows me in this book and tells me what to be aware of and who to be aware of. Right. Right. See? Amen. He tells me that, look, you don't hang around with certain people, and He tells you why. Right. See? Right. And another thing is, He says, look, your adversary, the devil, wants to kill, steal, and destroy your life. Yep. Right. Right. Yep. And Amen. yet, you kissing them on the lips. Yep. Mm. A lot of people got, I mean, they got a lip lock on the devil. Mm. Because he's made their life feel so much better, feel so much good. Yeah. Ooh, I got power, but I feel bad, good, much better about it. See? They're not telling you your dependency is supposed to be on Jesus if you call yourself safe. Right. Right. Him alone, him alone, amen. And yeah. nobody else and nothing else. Yeah. Why you walk around miserable? Mm -hmm. Because you don't believe that. Yeah. You still think that you have some semblance of control in your life and you can do it without Jesus. Let me tell you what the Lord said about it when he was walking on the earth. I can do nothing of myself. What I see my father do, that's what I do. What I hear my father say, that's what I say. I mean, are you going to be a fool all your life? Huh? Really? Are you going to be a fool all your life? Because... As long as you continue to disobey God and to ignore the commandments of God, you are a fool with about 15 zeros in the middle. <laughs> it's, it's really shameful. And it really has you, when you think about it, when you've got the power of God mm -hmm. living inside of you, mm -hmm. In the person of Jesus Christ by the Holy Ghost. Right. And yet you can't live this life. You don't know where to go when you have issues in your life. You've been commanded to cast all your care on Jesus because he cares for you. Yep. And if you, that scripture wasn't even in the Bible, if you got saved and you understand why you got saved and who died in order that you might be saved. That's all, that ought to be enough in itself. Right. There you right. go. True. Amen. That ought to be enough. But you know what? You don't appreciate Jesus. Right. You're not thankful for what he's done. You don't care that he hung on a cross. You don't care that there was a, 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 a spear stuck in his side. You don't care there was a thorn on his head, you know, with blood running down his face. And, and, and his face was all beat because they slapped him. They whipped him at one time. And yet, Isaiah said, you couldn't even recognize right, him. Right, right. And you can't serve nobody like that? Right. You're worse than dog vomit. Mm -hmm. Because the Bible says a dog mm -hmm. will go back to his vomit. Yep. See? Yep. Mm -hmm. Turn him back from the Lord, because mm -hmm. I ain't got no taste for this anymore. Let me go back here. My vomit tastes better than that. Mm. And you know what you're telling Jesus? Man, I ain't serving you. Mm -hmm. I mean, God, I tried it for a while, but pff, it ain't nothing to it. Come on. Mm. My life ain't changed. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing the same stuff I was doing. You know why? Because God never took away from you your choice. Right. Wow. You get to be an idiot if you want to be. That's right. Yeah. God will let you be a full-blown idiot Absolutely. if that's what you want to be. Yes. See, yes. He'll let you be that. Yes. See, And he will let you, allow you to think more highly of yourself than yes. you ought to. Yes. Yes. That's the way this guy is we were talking about earlier. He's, he's got his dog on heads all up, head all up in the clouds. You better be careful that one of them doggone airplane propellers may run into it. <laughs> Could happen, you know. It happened to birds. It may happen to him. See? 
But I will tell you this, and I believe this with my whole heart. That guy ain't getting away with nothing. Right. He think that he's doggone guy. Oh, baby, he's doggone gonna get. He gonna get an Oscar for this act he put on. See, and he thinks that. Oh man, I got it made in the shade. You, because see, when you're a believer, you know that only one person's word really matters, yes, and that's God. Absolutely, that's God. And guess what? He will always have the last say so. Yes, he right. will. Yep. Always. True. And your life is going to be judged by how you lived on this earth, what you did good and what you did bad. Right. right. It's all of it's going to be judged. See? But see, this is what happens when you're a clown and a knucklehead. You're not thinking about all of that. Right. Your attention is so focused on you mm -hmm. and what you want and what your concerns are. You don't give a rip about what anybody else thinks, what anybody else says. And you don't give a rip about what God thinks or what God says. Come on. Because if you did, you repent. Yeah. Right. See? That's, right. That's what you would do. You would repent. See? And the Bible says that... Um, in verse, look at verse 14. He said, Then Jesus answered and said unto them, Though I bear record of myself, yet my record, excuse me, yet my record is true, for I know whence I came and whither I go, but you cannot tell whence I came and whither I go. Now understand again, and I'm going to say preachers here. These preachers think that they got it all figured out. Mm -hmm. But what did Jesus say? He says, look, but you cannot tell whence I come and whence I... Look at that word, cannot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Cannot. That means it doesn't matter how much you try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You can't tell me where I'm going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't. You don't even know that. That's yeah. what Jesus is saying. But I'm a pastor. I'm a preacher. Jesus says, no, you're not. That's right. You're a liar and you're a thief. Yeah. Because of your lies, you have stolen the eternal life of a lot of people with me because you lied to them. Right, mm -hmm. amen. And you, they thought you were telling them the truth, but you right. were lying to them. Wow. Right. See? Yeah. And you know why you lied to them? Because you didn't want to tell them the truth. Truth meant nothing to you. Mm-hmm. And truth means nothing to a lot of people today. Right, mm -hmm. Especially these, a lot of these pastors, man. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, in James 3 1, the penalty is going to be worse for preachers. Absolutely. Right. It's going to be worse. And you know why? Because we have the availability to influence the life of more people than just a regular person. Right. Ken may be able to affect two, three lives or whatever. But a preacher has opportunity every week mm -hmm. yeah. to uh, preach a gospel that would turn people to Jesus and lead people to Jesus that their lives might be saved and that their lives might be changed. Right. right. That's true. Right. But when it's all about your church and all about your denominational doctrines and all about you and stuff, Ain't nobody getting helped by that. People are getting wounded. Right. Some are going to die. Yes. All yes. because of what you said and what you did. Because you claim to be a representative of Jesus when in essence you're not. Amen. You're not. So Jesus said, you cannot tell whence I come or where I go. Verse 19. Go down there, please. Then said they unto him, where is thy father? Jesus answered, Ye neither know me nor my father. Amen. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. See? Yep. Because the thing is, you don't know it. Right. How can you know somebody that you don't spend time with? And how can you know somebody really because of your actions? You don't believe in. Right, amen. If you believe in Jesus, you're going to live as he lived. Right. You're going to walk as he walked. Right. You're going to hear the voice of God by the Holy Spirit. And you're going to do everything that he tells you to do. Amen. You're not going to argue. You're not going to question it. You're going to simply do what he said to do. Right. Yeah. 
And not only that, if there's anything in there that might bring any kind of focus or attention on yourself, you're going to shuffle on to the back because you don't want nobody putting you on a pedestal. Right. Because what happens is your head gets so dark gone big, mm -hmm. they have to make double doors going out your house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, your head bigger than a watermelon, <laughs> see, because you think so highly of yourself mm -hmm. and you think that you're this and you think that you're that. The Bible commands as a pastor that I esteem others better than myself That's right. mm -hmm. so that I can keep my ego in check. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I don't have that problem because I've always believed that you serve people even before I got saved. Mm -hmm. You help people. Yeah. You esteem people better than yourself. I didn't know that scripture back then, but my actions dictated that, see? Because people are important to me, mm -hmm. see? Very important to me. And my family in Christ are even more important to me, right. see? Right. And when I see an idiot trying to destroy a soul because of the fact that he thinks that he's better than everybody else and he's somebody, you know, that, you know, I can get away with this because of who I am. See, mm. I'm telling you, pride go before the fall. Yeah. That's right. See, you think you're all this and all that, and I'm telling you. And look, it ain't going to be the devil. Mm -hmm. God going to knock you to your knees, and you That's ain't right. going to even know where it came from. Right. Right. See, because he will not allow you to take an attempt at destroying one of his. Right. Amen. The Bible says if you try to mess with one of my kids, it's better that you tie a millstone around your dog on neck right. and dog yeah. go jump into the right. water. That's right. Is what right. he said. See? Right. see, people underestimate God's love for those who are his. Amen. See? They underestimate that. See, they don't yeah. really know that God loves you more than you could ever even think of. Absolutely. Right. Amen. I mean, he loves you more than you'll ever know. Okay. But the thing is, is that is that <clears throat> is that we have to. As pastors, be humble. Right. Because if you're not humble, who do you think going to want to listen to you? Mm -hmm. Only people going to listen to you are people who are just like you. Mm -hmm. Right. Amen. And Lord have mercy with a whole bunch of people just like a clown. See? <laughs> Somebody who thinks more highly of themselves than they ought to. Somebody who thinks that they're better than everybody else. Somebody that wants limelight on them. That's why a lot of guys become pastors, you know. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, that's why they become pastors because they want everybody to look up to them. Right. They want everybody to depend on them. They want everybody to come to them right. and stuff and treat them like they are special. You right. never saw that in the Bible. Amen. With none of the apostles. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, and, and when a person tried to dog on exalt them, they said, whoa, time right. out, brother. Right. Yep. Uh uh uh. I'm a man just like you. Right. right. Yes. Indeed. I'm no different than you. Right. I just got a calling on my life. Right. But I'm not better than you. See? Right. Right. I'm called by God to encourage you and strengthen you by the preaching of the gospel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See. That's my part in your life in terms of me helping you and encouraging you and strengthening you by the word. But see, look, man, we still brothers in Christ. Right. I'm no better than you are. See. Mm -hmm. And so. Most pastors don't do that. Mm -hmm. They have the opportunity to tell people from the pulpit, look, I'm a servant. Mm -hmm. You right. know, and I'm humbly your servant. Right. And I'm, I thank God that I'm able, or that he called me rather, to serve you. Mm -hmm. See? And so I'm never ever going to take advantage of anything as a pastor because that ain't what God told me to do. Mm -hmm. Right. You look at the life of Jesus, and Jesus humbled himself. Yeah, right. yeah. He made himself of no reputation. Mm -hmm. He made people more important than him. Yep. Amen. Because, you know, as he was going about, you know, and, and then his reputation would build and stuff, people started trying to put him up on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. Remember there were times when they tried to worship him, mm -hmm. and he went the other way? Yep. Mm -hmm. He said, uh-uh, ain't nobody worshiping me. That ain't what I came for, see? Because he wanted people to see. Because what do we? What happens to us when we think about certain people as being very, 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 very important? You know, and when you deem them as being important, then you're somewhat um, hesitant to talk to them. Mm -hmm. 
There are people right now that are so scared of their pastor mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that they mm -hmm. see him coming, they go the other way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. Because they're scared of him. Wow. And of what? I don't know. See? And I mean, you know, I'll be honest, I know people be scared of me sometimes, <laughs> but, I, but I know why they're scared. It's not about who I am, it's about what I got to say. <laughs> See? See, cause you know. <laughs> See, cause when it comes to the word, man, if the word is being preached and it's tearing your hide off, I'm not stopping. There you go. Amen. I'm not stopping. Amen See? for that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I mean, uh-uh, I'm not. I'm not doing that. God didn't call me to do that. If I were to do that, I would be no different than any other false, right. pre false preacher, false right. teacher. Right. No different, see? Right. And that was one thing that they said about Jesus. Mm -hmm. He preaches as one, he speaks as one rather having authority. Right. 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 Not like the scribes. Not like the exactly. chunks and the chipmunks, yeah. the Pharisees. <laughs> not like them at all, see? <laughs> When Jesus opened his mouth, they saw the Lion of Judah. Yes, they right. did. That's what they saw, see. Because, see, Jesus didn't, Jesus don't care about tearing your hide. If he has to tear your hide to get you yeah. right, whatever he tears, he can fix. Amen. 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 That's the right. thing about the Lord. Amen. You know, whatever he exposes, he can fix it. Yeah, he can. But he's got to have your cooperation yeah, because right. otherwise it's not going to get done. Okay, and um, what are you over there talking about, I tear your hide? I, I, I'm not just you, Pastor Bill, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I got ripped up a lot. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> it's good. It's changed my life. And you will some more in the coming weeks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want it out. <laughs> I want it in. <laughs> okay, verse, um, where are we? Verse 19. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then, um, but Jesus said, You neither know me nor the Father. He said, if you had known me, you should know my father also. Yep. These words spake Jesus in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no man laid hands on him, for his hour was not yet come. See, they couldn't do nothing to him. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how frustrating that made them? Mm -hmm. yeah. They done tried and tried and tried, and every time, hey, let's throw him off the doggone cliff. Yeah. Spread, boys. I yeah. got to walk through. Yeah. See, yeah. it ain't my time yet. See, right. See, they couldn't do anything to Jesus because it wasn't his time yet. Right. right. And believe it or not, the devil can't do nothing to you either. That's right. right. Amen. He doesn't right. have the power, nor does he has he been given the authority by God to do anything to you. Right. See, but the way the devil doggone ties his doggone ankle bracelets on your legs. Is because you act like some fool and give him and open the door and you let him in. That's right. You yeah. sin against God. Usually it's sin that lets him in. See? Or not keeping that big mouth shut. That's true. See? Amen. Yeah. The devil acts on your on your actions and on Amen. what you say just as much as the Holy Spirit does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. No different. Yep. No different. Verse 21. Then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way. And you shall see me and shall die in your sins. Whether I go, you cannot come. That's a lot of preachers. They ain't going to make it into heaven. Right, amen. Because, see, they did the same thing that these guys are doing. Claiming to know the Lord, but don't have no clue as to really who he is. Amen. Because they're trying to serve him based on what they think according to their flesh. And John says God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Right. Yes. True. That's what he said. So why in the world are we giving place to the devil if you claim to be saved? Right. The thing is, is that this is what's so mind-boggling to this pastor. There are a lot of people can see the devil coming. They can see the situation changing and they can see it setting up not to be so good. Right. But instead of rebuking, binding, casting out, doing whatever they got to do, resisting the devil, they'll just say, oh, well, it'll, it'll get better after a while. Open the door. Mm -hmm. Come on. But do you think by you saying that, that that's going to stop the devil? Mm -mm. That's not resistance. 
That's like opening both the double doors and say, come on in, devil. Come on in and make my life hell. Come on in and doggone make havoc in my family, in my marriage. Just come on in. That's See? Right. If God tells you to guard your heart, if God tells you to give no place to the devil, that means that you can. Amen. But as long as you're walking in the spirit, you will be aware of everything that you need to do, you need to say, and where you need to go. Yeah. That's right. Because you're being led by the spirit of God. Right. See? But these preachers, they didn't have a clue about who Jesus was. They didn't even recognize him. Amen. They thought he was some clown. That's what they did. But when they started seeing people's lives change as a result of what he said and what he did, they go, wait a minute. We took this boy for granted. See? <laughs> and notice you didn't hear nothing about Jesus until he got to be 30 and started the ministry. Mm-hmm. Except for that one time when he was 12 years old and his parents yeah. left him in Jerusalem. Yeah. But other than that, you don't hear nothing about Jesus. But you can't tell me that Jesus wasn't ministering right. before God made him known in yeah. Scripture. Right. You can't tell me that. Because I know when I first got saved, I couldn't wait to tell somebody. Yeah, sure. Right. You know, I mean, if I had to go out there and stand in front of a tree and talk to them for a minute. <laughs> see? I did that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when the Bible talked, when, when Isaiah talked about the fire that was shut up in his bones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, we forget about those kinds of things. Right. Mm -hmm. We forget about those dudes say, look, the only way I can explain it is like fire shut up in my bones. Right. Because of their love for God, mm -hmm. see. And, you know, and the thing about it, I believe one of the differences is when God did something in their lives, they appreciated it. Yes, amen. They were thankful. They were humble because God did it for yeah. me. Yeah. See? Nowadays, old rotten Christians, <laughs> spar brats, mm. yeah. they think that God just supposed to do it for them. Yeah. I've heard people say that. Oh, he's supposed to do that for me. I'm his child. Are you a fool? Wow. Yeah. Honestly, I've heard yeah. people say that. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, I got this car. God gave me that car. You know? And I say, no, he didn't. Yes, he did. I'm a child of God. Don't you know the devil can give his kids stuff too? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. He stole the authority in the world so he can give you whatever you want. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Whatever it takes to deceive you and make you think that it came from God, he'll do that. Yeah. yeah. See? Mm -hmm. See, people don't realize that a true salvation will manifest the character of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. It will do that. And if it's right. not, then you need to go look in the mirror and start questioning yourself. Mm -hmm. Look at that person and say, wait a minute, man, didn't we do this and that? Didn't we do that? And if your if your if your image could show could, could say something back, go no, we didn't do that. Mm -hmm. You thought you did. See, mm -hmm. remember that old church you went to, and that you were all caught up in that old movement and stuff. You know, your your heart never changed. See, think about Jesus. He's gonna always tell you the truth. Right. He ain't gonna lie to you. He don't care about whether it make you mad or not. Right. He doesn't care. He wants your sin exposed. Or he wants your shortcomings exposed so that you can deal with them with him. Mm -hmm. See? But most people don't want that. Right, that's true. They don't want that. They don't, they don't, they really don't want the real Jesus. They want a fake Jesus that they can create for themselves. Yes. yes and unfortunately, yes. because of you know our ability, or God gave us the ability to have an imagination. Look, in my imagination. I can make anything be whatever I want it to be. Right. Mm -hmm. I can make truth be whatever I want it to be. Right. I can make salvation be whatever I want it to be. Right. I can make repentance whatever I want it to be. See? And then you start getting in that area like what these crazy folks are doing now. Well, you know, today I'm a I'm, I'm doggone human being, but I think of tomorrow... I want to think... I think I'd be a cockroach to see how they live. <laughs> Or I may be a, a, a Jimmy the Cricket. See how, he, <laughs> see how they live or whatever. See? And you don't call that crazy? Mm. 
That's, That's a right. nut job right there, yep. Jack. Yep. yep. Well, I feel like a cat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Meow. <laughs> Yeah. No, you not. Don't forget to put that litter box in that bathroom, kid. <laughs> <laughs> we got so much stupid going on now, yes. I swear, I can't recognize none of it. Yeah. You know, true. true. I mean, you know what's just as stupid is, the Bible says one thing, and yep. you tell somebody, come on down to the front and shake the preacher's hand, and you're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. See, that's just as stupid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, really. All I got to do is, because see, you know, the one thing, you can get your mind right with that, you know, when somebody finally shakes some sense into you. But when you're not going to uh, play those no stupid games and stuff, you know, thinking that you all this and that, you can't fix that mm -hmm. except for one way, repentance. Mm -hmm. right, right. Yeah. And see, I'm going to tell you something. I've said this many times, and I, and I really don't think that everybody got it yet. When you don't repent of your sin. The longer you put off the repentance, you still got that sin. Sure. Yeah. And what I will tell you, that sin decided that it was going to take up its rights. Yeah. Because now you let that sin get a hold in your life, and now that sin <clears throat> believes that it owns you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what happens is that lust becomes attached to that sin. Right. And all of a sudden, you have such a burning desire to commit that sin that it don't matter what I say, it don't matter what your brother say, your sister say, your wife say, it don't matter what anybody says. Because when lust has got a grip on you, baby, it's hard to get it off. Right. Come on. Because if lust has gotten to the point to where your flesh burns to commit that sin, mm. then you're in trouble. Yeah. It has control over you. Yep. And it's the same thing I was talking about this morning. The lust for attention is what this pastor's got, what I'm talking about. Wow. Lust for attention. Because why would you promote an incident of a deceased young person and then, and yet something that wasn't really nothing, to be honest with you, that you are ticked off about? Why would you be publicizing it? Why would you be throwing it out on, trying to make sure it get on TV, on radio, or whatever, see? And my question from the very outset was, how does God get the glory out of that? Yeah, yeah. That's my thing. Aren't we saved to bring glory unto the Father? Supposed right. to. Right. See? What did Jesus say? Let your light so shine among men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father. Yeah. That's right. Not yourself. Right. right. See? Right. That's good. The minute that you start uh, uh, glorifying yourself, you are no longer a representative of Jesus Christ. Right. You're your own God. Yep. Because you've made yourself your own God. Yep. People ought to be looking to Jesus instead of looking to you. Right. Amen. Because that's where you should be turning the eyes and the hearts is towards him. Right. And not on you. Right. See? But you've done that. You've screwed up. <clears throat> and I'll be honest with you. And if you don't repent, it ain't going to end well. Right. Amen. It's not going to end well. Because of all of the lives that you've infected. Not affected. Infected. Right. With evil. With hate. I mean, just self-righteousness. <clears throat> And I swear, the egos are so big, you can't even fit them into this world anymore. Mm -hmm. I can promise you, some folks' egos ran out of space somewhere because it's mm -hmm. so big. <clears throat> That's what you call an egomaniac. Yep. And I will tell you, God is not pleased. Amen. At all. He's not pleased at all. <clears throat> Here, we try to finish up with this show. Um... Where did we finish up um, in that? Was it 21? Yes. Okay, let's go over to, up to verse 23. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above, ye are of this world, I am not of this world. 
Remember we were talking earlier about how in our society nowadays, we have a lying federal government. Mm -hmm. They, I had never seen nobody lie like these people right. since I've been born. I'm Amen. not lying. And I mean, as a, as a group, <laughs> I mean, just lying. Mm -hmm. They are pushing on the people, us in this country, that good is evil right. and evil is good. Absolutely. They're taking the name of God, trying to get it out of everything. Right. Amen. They don't even want you doggone saying in God we trust. Right. Trying to take it out with the money. Right. Yeah. And they definitely don't want you listen to the Star Spangled Banner. Yep. Yeah. See? Trying to take away the Constitution right. and stuff. Trying to get rid of all of that. Trying to take away normal. Trying to make transgenderism, homosexuality, right. sexual perversion. Right. Trying to say that's normal. Right. For people to be that way. Amen. See? It's not normal. Amen. It's sin. Yes. Yeah. Same thing happened in the church. The church has taken that which is in the world and put it in the church. Yes, yes. The things that they're doing in the church now, you can't find in scripture, but they say that that's normal. Right. It's yes. normal to have church services without mentioning the name Jesus, Come without on. preaching the gospel. Wow. See, the church is saying that that's okay. See, yeah. mm -hmm. because the substitute is We've got entertainment. Yeah. We've got activities. We've got games. We got everything for everybody. Right. Something for everybody. Right. See? So it. don't worry about us hurting your feelings. Yeah. Don't worry about us preaching a gospel that's going to put you under conviction. Don't worry about us. We are not going to preach any of that. See? Yeah. Because we want you happy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't work that way. Want you happy. No, yeah, it don't work that way. <laughs> But the thing is, is they don't care whether it works that exactly. way. It's all about me feeling good. It's all about me not being convicted. It's all about me not being offended. I mean, look, if I tell somebody, <clears throat> you know, well, you know, I, I really think that, uh, that uh, you need to go see so-and-so -so -so instead of so-and-so. -so. Oh, you offended me now because you know I'm not going to see him. Mm -hmm. Huh? No, I'm not going to. Why? I don't know. I'm just not going to go. I don't like it. Don't even know it. See? Don't know it, but don't like it. I'm offended now because you want me to go see somebody that's not a liar like me. You don't want me to go see somebody. You want me to go see somebody that they're going to tell me the truth about myself. You know, so I don't want to go see them. What are you trying to do? Get me to find out the truth so I can change myself. <laughs> yeah. Same thing happened in church. Yeah. yeah. We ain't gonna offend you. Right. And the thing is, is that the church is bringing homosexuality in. Yes. Yeah. The church is bringing, uh, you know, say that adultery is okay. Yeah. Fornication is okay. Lying, thieving preacher is okay. As a matter of fact, that's normal. Yeah. In these churches. See. Everybody can say it. No, so the church ain't really concerned about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And ain't concerned about righteousness. It's not concerned about holiness. See? Right. Because like I said before, when you've got five different denominations, you know, of all kinds, of all colors and all stripes and stuff, they all are gonna be different. Mm -hmm. They got different doctrines and stuff. So how can that be? When the Bible says in the fourth chapter of Ephesians, there's only one Lord, one, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who's above all and in you all. So how can they all have different salvation plans? Right. right. Amen. If they all believe in the same Bible, see, right. and believing in the same God. But you know what? They don't. Right. They all have what they call their faith. Yeah. You ever heard people talk, well, you know, my faith. Yeah. Well, my faith. Huh? Where'd you get it at? Walmart. Where'd it come from? That's a good place, Walmart. <laughs> and where did you get your Kmart? <laughs> well, I got mine at Macy's. <laughs> you know, my faith is a little bit better than your faith. <laughs> That's the way they treat yeah. faith. Yeah. They put so much stock and so much confidence in a denomination and in a building, you know, and in a preacher of their denomination. See, mm -hmm. 
Do you think a Baptist person is going to come to this church and listen to me preach? Mm -hmm. Pentecostal on the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> they burn up before they got out. <laughs> yeah. But I'm not saying I'm not saying that in an arrogant way, in a prideful yeah. way. I'm just saying, yeah. if we got a certain type of a church, that's the only kind of church I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Been that way ever since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Baptists ain't gonna go to Pentecostal church. It ain't right. gonna happen. Right. Never. Do you think a doggone Baptist preacher is going to let a Pentecostal preacher, you know, on fire for God, come into their congregation? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. Because the, the, the thing is, is you've been doggone soothing all of these people, you know, and putting them all to sleep every Sunday. <laughs> Somebody come up in there and say, and, and come up with the real word of God, you know, and their eyes start opening, and you know right then you don't hit somebody right there. Mm -hmm. See, the word of God was not sent and given to us to make us comfortable. Right. Amen. That's right. The word of God Amen. was sent to convict, right. to chastise, right. Right. to correct, to rebuke, yep. and to heal. Yes, right. yes, See, yes. That is what it was sent for. See, most folk can't even tell you why God gave them, gave us the word of God. They can't even tell you that. They can't even tell you, okay, so what are the qualifications for a man to be a pastor according to God? They can't tell you that either. Right. See? Well, I got to go see one of my diggings and maybe they can give me a copy of what they... Mm, huh? Yeah. They got their own yeah. copy. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because they do things the way they want to do them. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't do them God's way. Amen. They did them God's way, we'd have a whole lot more saved people. Yes. Living for God. Not caring about a denomination or none of that. You know, I want to serve God. Yep. I want to live for God. I want my life to honor and to glorify God. You ain't going to be doing that in one of them places. Amen. You might as well get you a book and just go get you a little desk and go sit by a tree and preach to yourself out the Bible. Mm -hmm. You got a better chance of being saved than you are going to a lot of these places and listening to that doggone googly God. Yep. See, because that's all it is. Verse... Um, what did I say? 25. Mm -hmm. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? They didn't even know it. Mm -hmm. And even though he had been prophesied about forever. Yep. And they taught that stuff in the synagogue, in, in the temples and stuff. They taught about it. They read the scroll. They read the Old Testament words and stuff. And yet they didn't even, they couldn't even figure it out. Yep. You know what? When I, as I say that, I think about the woman at the well. Remember in chapter 4 of John when Jesus met the woman at the well? Mm -hmm. And the woman said, we know the Messiah was coming. And she just didn't know who he was. Right. And Jesus revealed himself to her. Yes, he did. Yeah. Now you think about that. Okay, here we got religious people. Pharisees, because he talked to the Pharisees and the Jews. Yeah, he did. Yeah. They can't even figure out that Jesus is coming. And had been prophesied about him. But here's a woman that the Jews treat like a dog. Yes. But even she knew yep. right. that the Messiah was coming. Right. See, that, that I'll tell you something. These folks get in these positions in these churches for that very reason as a position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's amazing how they think that these positions are prestigious now. And that everybody's going to respect me because, you know, I'm the pastor. Mm. I'm one of the lion deacons. Yeah, yeah. Mm. See? You know, I'm an elder in the church. See? And they talk about these guys so eloquently. You know, in some of these churches that I've been to, they'll go, well, the honorable, this is in the church now, the honorable Dr. So-and-so-and-so, our pastor. Introducing this dude like he's at a doggone concert or something. Mm -hmm. See, we are supposed to be exalting men. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to be exalting God. Right. But in some of these churches, I said this before, you ain't getting in these churches if you don't have a doggone PhD. Right. Or a ZT2 or something. <laughs> you ain't got something like that. Mm -hmm. Letters by your <clears throat> name. Yeah. I mean, because I could never figure out why in the world would... A pastor have doctor behind his name. Mm -hmm. 
and with the PhD, and they love to throw out them 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 yep. them accomplishments, them PhDs and doctorates and all of that. And then when they get to Jesus, oh, it's just Jesus. Yeah. Hmm. Say again. There's some of them probably dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> You could be right, Donnie. <laughs> you could be right. But, but they do. <laughs> we'll keep that between us and Donnie. Okay? <laughs> but but these guys, the point I want to make with all of this, let me let me just uh I have quite a few more that I wanted, but in verse uh go to verse forty. In verse 40, this is Jesus speaking. He said, But now you seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. You do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, uh, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Now in verse 40, when Jesus said, You want to kill me, a man who had told you the truth. See, this is the thing in the church. It's no different. They're trying to kill him in the world, and they're trying to kill him in the church because they are taking as much of the truth out of the church as they possibly can. Yeah. See? Yeah. yeah. They're, they're doing that. They ain't telling you the truth, see? Because the Bible says that we ought to believe what? Every word that proceeded forth out of the mouth of God. We don't get to minus or plus any of it. Right. At all. It is what it is. Yes. Right. And if you... Believe that you've been called by God to be a pastor. You better be preaching all this word. Yeah. That's all I can tell you, man. You better be preaching all of the word of God. See? Because, see, God ain't having none of it. Right. God is not going to doggone uh, uh, give you a pass when you got the same gospel that I got. Right. right. The same word that I have, you got it. See? Right. And that's what God tells you to preach. But you cannot preach it because you do not have the Spirit of God living in you. Right. See, I can't preach. I can't preach the gospel if the Holy Spirit is not leading me. That's right. Because God said it's because of Him yes. that yes. I will preach the truth, lead, teach, guide. Yes. Holy Spirit will be doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. See, these folks ain't don't want nothing about the Spirit in the church at all. Right. See, and the thing is, they want to doubt go on, uh, uh, name shame the Holy Ghost. Mm. That's kind of dangerous, though. Yeah. Because the Bible says that if you blaspheme mm. the Holy Spirit, no God says, ain't no forgiveness for that. Right. See? In other words, you said that the Holy Spirit didn't do that when he actually did. Yeah. No, he didn't. Yes, he did. See? Okay, well, you suffer the consequences of your decision, whatever you think. See? Mm. But I know that the Holy Ghost did that. Mm. See? I got saved by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, no man cometh unto the Father unless the Spirit draw him. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Verse 41, you do the deeds of your father, then said they to him, we be born not of fornication, we have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do you not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? There's that word again. Yep. You cannot hear my word. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. Amen. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Right. And because I tell you the truth, Jesus said, you believe me not. Verse 46, which of you convinceth me of sin? And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? See, right. Jesus already know the answer, but he just said to them, why won't you believe me? And Jesus says, he that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not because you are not of God. God. Let me tell you, every pastor that is just like these guys, they don't know the truth. Right. They can't hear Jesus. They don't understand who he is. Right. Why? Because their father is the devil. Yep. Jesus just said it. Their father is the devil. That's why you can't hear me. 
You can't understand me. You don't know me. You can't go where I'm going. Because all of those people that, <clears throat> that I'm talking about not being able to go where Jesus can go, they all, if they die without repentance, they're going to hell. Every pastor, yes. every preacher, every doggone deacon, you are going to hell. That's the bottom line. See, because Jesus said, you don't belong to me. If you knew me, you know, if you belong to me, you would know who I am. You would understand what I'm saying. You would go where I can go or where I'm going, but you can't. These preachers can't go there. The guy I was talking about this morning, right now, he's going to hell unless he repents. See? Because he's doing the deeds of his father, the devil, and not the deeds of, his, of our father, God. Because if he did, the whole actions, his actions would be totally different. Couldn't wait to repent. Couldn't wait to get it right. See? Because... That's what God would do. And there ain't no way that if I'm walking in disobedience and I'm stirring up strife among the brothers and stuff, yeah. there ain't no way that I'm representing God. And there's no way that Jesus is going to be pleased with that. Right. See? Yeah. No way. No way. See, yeah, you got all these people patting you on the back and talking, telling you about how good, how great you are, and you know how vindicated you are and stuff. And yeah, you still trying to give them the doggone call Rick and Bubbles to see if you can get this doggone gossip on that doggone show. Wow. Mm -hmm. Cause that's what this stuff is. It's gossip now. Mm -hmm. It's gossip. Because there's no benefit in it for anybody, you know, in regard to who Jesus Christ is. Right. In regard to who a believer really is. No benefit in it whatsoever. See? And they're going to pay the price. He's going to pay the price, and the people that's been pumping him up and patting him on the back, they're going to pay the price as well. Mm, See? Yeah. And out there, I say most of them, are, I don't even believe it's saying. There's no way you're going to be pumping up somebody that's stirred up strife, as I said, but not only that, but pumping out hate. Mm. You know, putting the man's name on there and letting everybody know to hate him. See? Wow. That's, that's stupid, man. That's stupid. That's Look, mm. I'm a child of God. People like that, they don't, I'm not their brother. I'm not related to them. Mm. We don't have anything right. in common. Our fathers are even different, just like Jesus mm -hmm. said. His father is the devil. My father is God. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. My father is God. See? And we need to learn and understand that, look, we don't be doing crap like this. Right. You know, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't try to take advantage of a situation, especially when death is involved. To yeah. try to make ourselves look better right. and all of that. See? Yeah. You know, I don't know what a grieving father is like, but I know that I've had relatives close to me that I know losing them, what that felt like. You don't get over it overnight. Right. And it's a whole lot different than having a child. Yeah. See? And that's your baby, your daughter, your son that passed away. See? At a very young age. You don't get over that overnight and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for somebody to subvert it and use it as a doggone tool no. to pump themselves up, mm -hmm. that is about as evil as you can be. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, as evil as you can be or you can get this stuff. And when these blind guys running around here, and you know, the Bible said the blind leading the blind, they yeah. all fall in the ditch. Yeah, See? they do. They'd all be. I mean, you go out there, if you can see the spirit, ditches are full. Yeah. yeah. Full. It's amazing how people would much rather follow man than follow God. Yep. Amen. See, because following God means that you got to get rid of your pride. Following God means you got to esteem other people better than yourself. Yes. Following the Lord means that you don't put your name out there for nothing. Mm -hmm. See, mm -hmm. you just simply do the will of God. And the Bible says, don't let your left hand know what your right hand's doing. Right. See? So you're not looking for recognition. You're not looking for any kind of glory at all. See, you're looking to serve the hurting, mm. serve the wounded, serve those who are injured and stuff. By representing the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. See, you know, we all got brothers and sisters in Christ mm -hmm. that have issues and that are hurting or whatever. You know, something somebody said was, you know, like Christians, he said they, they, uh, they do one or two things. 
They they uh, <clears throat> they kill their wounded, mm -hmm. or they leave them to die. Mm -hmm. One or two things. See, I don't want anybody ever to be able to say that about me. Right. Never, never. I want to be one that shepherd that Jesus says knows his sheep. Yeah. Yes. And the sheep follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. And they don't follow a stranger. Right. See, these people are following a stranger disguised as the devil. Yeah. Disguised as a human being, but he's really an agent of the devil. Mm -hmm. See? So there was so much more that I that I wanted to share in um in coming weeks. We'll we'll share it because all of these papers that I got, we're gonna go through. I believe God wants us to teach him because I believe that the office of the pastor has been so demonized because of those who represent it. Most who have not been called by God, but most who put themselves in the position of pastor. Perverted. Uh, exactly. They perverted it and stuff. And, you know, and people are so, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say naive. I, I just think that people just really don't care. Mm -hmm. You know, they've become to the they've come to the point to where they want what they want and they know that there are a whole lot of different places out there where they got that they have to choose from mm -hmm. to find what they want. See. Um, you'll find that most people like that <clears throat> that are a little bit discontent, the minute that you see a new church go up, that's where they're gonna be going. Mm -hmm. See. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where they're gonna be going, see. <laughs> Um, you know, in our church, you know, we, we, my wife and I, we prayed that God would send us people that love him and people that love the word of God, mm -hmm. you know, and so, and so, so far that's what we got. And, um, because I'm not, you know, I'm not going to be dealing with stupid, you know, <laughs> that person I was talking about this morning, there's no way he going to set foot in this house, in this church, never, mm -hmm. unless he repents. I don't want the devil up in here. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I really don't, because that stuff is definitely not of God, and if it's not of God, it's but one other person that it can be of. Yeah, and that's the devil. Say Amen, Mary Jackson. Amen. <laughs> I got a train, boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, Lord willing, you know, we will see you uh, next Sunday. You know, the Bible says that greater is He that is in me than He that's in the world. There's nothing in your life that if you trust God with that you can't overcome because you can. Because if you truly belong to Jesus, the Bible says that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And also I can do, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. My help coming from the Lord. Hopefully yours does as well. God bless you. Okay.